Hello. Hi, we're here at the Cheltenham Science Festival. And today we're going to be talking about quantum computing. NASA and Google have just bought their very own quantum computer. But amazingly, when Tom tried to buy one for $15 million, his credit card was declined. How did he know? But the question that we really want to ask today is what makes the Google NASA machine a quantum computer? Yes, before you max out your credit card, we want to give you the knowledge that you'll need to be able to spot the difference between a normal computer and a quantum computer. Now, obviously, the main use for a computer is to solve equations. Or subscribing to the Head Squeeze channel, or doing your online shopping. But even when you're doing online shopping, you're still using equations. If your computer just sent the credit card number over the internet, then somebody could intercept it. So instead, your computer scrambles up the credit card number so only the online shop can understand it. If somebody were to uh, intercept the message on its way over the internet, it's set up in a clever way so the only way that they could get the credit card number back is by solving a massively massively hard equation. So if you did want to steal a credit card number online, you'd need to be very, very clever or work at the shop. Mm. Now you might wonder why you can't just set a normal computer to solve the very hard equation for you. But it would take so long to do that that you'd be dead before you got a uh, single credit card number. Of course, you could try speeding things up by buying several normal computers and linking them all together to test out lots of possible solutions at the same time. But even when people have done that, it's taken them four years with some of the most powerful computers in the world to get just the most basic piece of information out. So this not only takes you a lot of time, it also costs you a lot of money, which uh, Tom doesn't have. Um, anyway, uh, what's different about quantum computers is this. Quantum computers can be used to solve these sort of equations used in online security much faster. This is because they use advanced technology to take advantage of the weird properties of quantum mechanics in order to test out lots of possible solutions at the same time. According to the well-tested laws of quantum mechanics, individual particles can explore all possibilities simultaneously. That's because instead of behaving as tiny microscopic billiard balls rolling along, these particles sometimes behave more like ripples on the surface of water, spreading out from a splash and exploring the entirety of the pool table. Now normally you don't notice, but a quantum computer can harness this weirdness to test out all possible solutions in the same computer at the same time. And that's what's special about quantum computers, which is why it'd be great to buy one or make one if you were, for example, an international criminal organisation or a rogue state, because then you could secretly eavesdrop on all internet communication. And that's why, uh, if I made a quantum computer, I wouldn't tell you that I'd made a quantum computer. Uh, not, not that I have made a quantum computer, but if I had, I wouldn't tell you. Anyway, uh, going back to this quantum computer that Google and NASA have actually bought. In the case of Google and NASA, their machine is capable of solving big lists of equations which all depend on each other in a certain way. Now, that would be a long, difficult task on a normal computer because you'd have to test out every possibility one by one. But the Google NASA machine instead uses a box of quantum particles. The box is set up to be a sort of physical version of the mathematical equations and the particles work out how to solve them. So in some ways it's like doing physics backwards. Normally we'd use a lot of mathematical equations to describe what was going on in a physics experiment. But with this quantum computer we're using a physics experiment to help us solve a load of mathematical equations. And it's the configuration of the particles in the box at the end of the experiment that tells you the solution to the mathematical equations in record time. However, this can only be used to solve certain types of problems. Problems in the fields of artificial intelligence or biophysics, for example. Yeah, it's uh, probably not going to be much use for cracking that equation that's in charge of online security, for instance. 
but to be fair, we're just getting started with quantum computing. After all, in the early days of normal computers, people were building stuff out of wires and vacuum tubes that could only be used to solve individual specific tasks. These days, of course, we have general purpose computers that can be programmed to do pretty much anything, given enough time. Ultimately, someone will build a general purpose quantum computer in the same way that today we have general purpose normal computers. But for now, your online shopping is safe and secure because the only quantum computer available can be used to solve this very specific, different type of task. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the only quantum computer that you uh, know about. You don't need a quantum computer to subscribe to the Head Squeeze channel, you just need to click here. How do we get back down? Is it the, the ladder again? Is it? The ladder? No, I'm, I'm going down in the lift that I came up with.